Hello occultists. In this video I have a special guest joining me today. I have Molly Victoria who is an evolutionary astrologer and I'm going to link her information below if you're interested in connecting with her. She does natal chart readings so if you're interested in getting a reading from her definitely feel free to reach out and I will be introducing her momentarily but I did want to say that this video is going to be part of a planetary magic series. So in this video this is part one of our planetary magic series where we are going to discuss the seven traditional planets. So that would be the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter. And we are going to be discussing the archetypal energies that these planets bring to the table or that they um, that they represent. And so that way you can start to get an idea of which planet you might want to use in a particular spell or ritual. So our hope is to give a brief overview of these planets. And this is not an exhaustive list. I just want to say that we tried to make this video as short and concise as possible, but just know that planetary magic is a huge huge rabbit hole that you can really dive deep down into and honestly we could have spent hours talking about this topic but we wanted to keep it as, as short and sweet as possible without watering it down too much so I hope that you enjoy I will have timestamps down below in this video so if there's a particular planet you're interested in jumping to you're more than welcome to do that and at the end of this video we are going to play a spell game so we have a bowl with a bunch of spells in it and we are going to pull those spells out and then Molly and I will have a little debate either a debate or a discussion, I'm not sure how that's going to go, on which planets we will use for what particular spell it is that we just pulled out of that bowl. So I'm hoping that you can see that everything's up for debate. You know, if you have a spell for money or prosperity, let's say, there are multiple different planets that you could use for a spell like that. So I'm hoping that with this spell game towards the end of the video, you can start to see how to work with these planetary energies and how to really choose which planet it is that you want to work with a little bit further. And then in part two, we will be discussing how to actually invoke these energies into your spells and rituals. So today is discussing what the planets represent and then part two is going to be discussing how to invoke those energies into whatever it is that you're doing, whatever spell working that is. So I'm going to link part two down below once that video is up, but I really hope you enjoyed this video and without further ado, let's begin. I am here with one of my life partners. She is my best friend, my spiritual soulmate, and she is also an evolutionary astrologer. So I'd like to introduce Molly Victoria. Would you like to talk about your practice a little bit? Sure, yeah, hello. Um, like she said, I'm Molly, and I'm an evolutionary astrologer operating out of the Pacific Northwest in Washington. And I've been practicing astrology for the last five years, and I absolutely love it. I pair that with tarot as well, or, or tarot, however you wanna say it. And yeah, it just really helps me serve the collective and be that spiritual healer and guide that I've always wanted to be. And yeah, I'm here to walk you through some planetary magic with the lovely occultist. Yay, I'm so excited. Yeah, yes, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the seven traditional planets. So that is the sun, moon, mercury, Mars, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, did I get them all? In no, in that no particular in no order. Particular order. <laughs> yes. So we're going to be discussing these seven traditional planets and the archetypes that they bring, so you can use them in your magical practice. So, so Molly, would you like to start us with the luminaries, which is the sun and the moon? Yes, absolutely. So just diving into the sun first off. The sun is that inherent light. It shines brightly every day. It's the ultimate illuminator and the bringer of all things life. Um, as far as its key correspondences go, it's symbolic of the ego, the will, that vital force that we push outward into the world and where we shine and illuminate. The moon is that that reflects the sun and has so much to do with that reflective process, the inner personal, private world that we have that maybe we don't share with the world. Um, key correspondences with the moon would be things like our memory, that that rules the past, um, the cyclical energy, and it does have to do with creativity just like the sun does, they both do, but again, the sun is gonna be more that outward creation and the moon is gonna be more of that receptive, inner creative kind of quiet space. So it's kind of like your, so the sun is like the outward expression and then the moon is like the inward expression. Would you say that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 So like the moon ruling your internal world and your emotions and then the sun yes. being your outward expression, your ego. And yeah. The moon being that Philly yin space, the yeah. sun being that more yang. 
Yes, I love, I love how you say that. The yang is the sun and the yin is the moon. Yes. That's perfect. Yes. Yes. So as far as metaphysical properties go, I have my notes here so I don't, so I don't <laughs> miss anything. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. So you already touched on a lot of this stuff, but yes. it's all about harmony and healing when we're talking about the sun, strengthening willpower, um, even developing leadership or increasing happiness or friendship and just generally working with your ego. And then as far as the moon goes, this is great to work with um, when you want to do spells regarding your emotions or developing psychic abilities when you want to create illusions or access your unconscious or subconscious mind I know I love that <laughs> very good for reflective spells because like you said with the moon it's very much reflective of the Sun so yeah. anytime you want to reflect something back I feel like the moon would be a really good planet to use for something like that yeah absolutely. so yeah so those are the, the luminaries and then we will move on to mercury would you like to start us with mercury absolutely just diving into mercury mercury is my favorite I'm a double Gemini I'm not picking favorites actually but the mercury yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. The mercurial energy is that place of exchange. It's known as the messenger spirit. And it goes between worlds. It goes to the highest heavens and the lowest depths of it all. So it doesn't discriminate. It is very much binary energy. It's mm. not necessarily yang or yin. It is both. And I love mercury for its properties of like communication, um, just really wanting to clarify the mind. Um, yeah, mercury is incredible. Do you want to build mm -hmm. on? Oh, Hermes, the messenger spirit in Greek mythology is yeah. Super key. Um, and just kind of going back, like the sun would be Apollo. You know, there's all kinds of Greek mythological characters, but we can get into that. Oh, later. that's that's such a fun topic. Yeah, that's like definitely. a whole other thing. We should probably do another video yep. on that. Like oh, that yeah. would be so fun to do. <laughs> um, yeah, so Mercury is, is all about like the mind and the mental space, you know, it's like your yeah. mental clarity, your focus, your communication. It's also about traveling from one place to another because it's that messenger spirit. Yep. Um, what else did I have on my notes here to make sure we don't mm -hmm. miss anything? Um, improving communication, like I said, preventing discord because you're in, in, um, increasing that communication mm -hmm. as well as increasing flexibility and adaptability. Mm -hmm. You can use this for um, improving knowledge or intellectual ability as well, that capacity. Or even if you're trying to do a spell for school su su success, let's say you're doing an exam, I think that Mercury would be Education. a really great, yeah, a really great planet to use for that because it rules that the mind and the mental space. Keep in mind though, Mercury is a trickster spirit too because it oh. goes between worlds and talks with everybody. Oh yes. It can sometimes be a little bit of a gossip uh, king or queen. So <laughs> yes. yeah. I love how you threw that in as like double Gemini, not to be totally yeah. stereotypical yeah. right now, but like whatever. <laughs> Anyways, um, so moving on to Venus, which I love Venus energy. Do you want to talk about oh, that? Oh, of course you do. Of course you do. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Venus. Venus is the lover. I mean, we all are probably very familiar with the feminine association with Venus, but it is so much to do with our values, uh, financial and otherwise. So uh, your deeper, deeper personal values. Um, she kind of, Venus kind of works with the moon in that way. Like mm -hmm. they both really have that receptive energy, more again. And um, yeah, you know, people like to think of like roses and flowers and spring, you know, Persephone and Aphrodite are really common archetypes of Venus. Um, and yeah, what am I missing? So many things, beauty, love, relationships. Yes. Um, she governs all that is, you know, abundant sensual. and sensual. So sensual, yes. very much about the home and oh, like yeah. the feel goods. Mm -hmm. Touchy, feely, yeah. smelly, all of that stuff. This incense, these candles, oh, the yeah. aesthetics of the space. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about that, of course, because yeah, Venus rules beauty. So yeah, I think we got everything. It's also great to use in glamour magic, increasing creativity, sex magic. Venus is like, ooh, so sensual and sexy. I love Venus energy. Um, and also improving social skills, self-confidence, increasing pleasure, you know, all those creature comforts. Yeah. So yeah, that's very much Venus, which brings us to Mars. So let's talk about Mars a little bit. Yeah, Mars, that red, fiery, hot energy. Um, it is the you know counterpart to Venus right now. Actually, we have Venus and Mars in the same sign of Capricorn, and on March fifth, they're going to change into Aquarius. But so they're dancing together right now. They're dancing mm -hmm. very closely together. The cosmic lovers, but Mars is more to do with the drive, passion, anger, action. What can that warrior spirit do? So Yang energy. Yes. Yeah, Super, yeah. super yang, yang, however you want to say it. And uh, yeah, Mars is absolutely the archetype that will help you push towards your goals. It's ambitious. It wants to go. And uh, yeah, Mars is Mars is beautiful energy if you're trying to evoke, you know, some kind of movement in your life. Um, yeah, Mars is another one of my favorites because it's so oomph, you know, it's got primal. like that power. Yeah, it's primal. It's mm -hmm. got that power behind it and I love it. It's also really good for um, 
controlling your anger because on the bad side of Mars is that it can be a little temperamental, you know, it can oh, really yeah. kind of push you over the edge a little bit. So um, increasing your energy, dispelling fear. What else did I have on here? Increasing sex drive for sure, because you've got that young energy, mm -hmm. um, increasing ambition and vigor and yeah, all the things that you said from, I love working with Mars because it's so, <laughs> it feels so powerful to me. It is it absolutely. Just, yeah. It's yeah. like this just forward push of movement yes. and just, it's very energizing to work with. So yeah. yes. Okay. Moving on to Jupiter, Jupiter, the expansive benefic. So I didn't mention this, but the moon and Venus are benefic planets and Jupiter is along there with it, where it's this more like yin yummy harmonious energy. But Jupiter specifically is that wise, wise archetype that is so knowledgeable and like, I don't know if you've seen the Muppet Christmas Carol, but if you've seen the ghost of Christmas present and he's like, come in and know me better man. Like he's got red hair. He's surrounded by like just such abundance. I love that. That is the character that I always think of, but you could also imagine, you know, this very much, you know, Jupiter energy with the Raven, but yeah, blessings, luck, optimism, abundance. It's yummy, juicy energy. But if you don't want a lot of something, you know, you might not want to work with Jupiter. But yeah, Jupiter is a lot. Yeah, it's it can be so expansive and abundant heavy. for sure. Yes, I use Jupiter in a lot of like good luck spells, a lot of prosperity and abundance mm -hmm. spells. Um, really good for increasing your wealth and fortune. What else did I have here? Um, even good for leadership skills or gaining a promotion. It's just a very nice um, yeah. planet to have. I love, Ju if I had to pick one planet, it'd probably be Jupiter for me. Like Jupiter is my favorite. Cause it's yeah. like, it's like for me, that father figure that was like really fun. It was like the fun dad or maybe like the fun uncle even that like took oh, you yeah. to the mall and like just gave you money to buy all the treats that you ever wanted to buy at the mall. Yeah. Like it was just that fun guy that this you want to hang so, out with. I was just thinking about this last night. I was like, yeah. Jupiter is so the fun uncle or auntie. Right. Yeah, totally. Like the one who yeah. wants to do all the fun things with you. Absolutely. Yeah, the Literally. fun aunt or uncle. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, which is very opposite from Saturn. So let's talk about Saturn. Well, yeah, so I learned this from astrologer Rick Levine, but he contextualized Jupiter and Saturn in the way of the regulators. And that is to say that because of the expansive energy of Jupiter, you need Saturn to come in and say, well, wait a minute, like you got limitations, we got blockages, you got some karmic lessons to learn. So again, those are key terms of Saturn. Limitations, blockages, karmic lessons, but it's not to be afraid of. You know, you might have heard of your Saturn return when you turn 29. That's a uh, crystallized energy when things in your life get serious. It's known to be more of that like serious, stern, paternal archetype. But you as a, you know, whatever you identify as can embody the energy of Saturn. Um, it's that stern, uh, yeah, crystallized energy. Yeah, it's that yeah. sky daddy Saturn. I was literally <laughs> just daddy. saying that before we started recording that Saturn is so, it's it's like the sky daddy. I always look at Saturn for protection. It feels very protective to me because it's like that stern father figure yes. that seems scary when you're a child because sternness, it's always like scary. You know, you want to be with the fun uncle, but really <laughs> as an adult, you grow up to learn, oh, that was very necessary for and my I success. And I need boundaries. I need I boundaries. Need, I feel safe in these boundaries. Yep. I feel secure in these boundaries. Exactly. exactly. So those are little mottos of Saturn. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, Saturn is an excellent planet to work with um, for protection or for setting boundaries and limitations. So if you're a person that really struggles with setting boundaries, Saturn might be a good planet to work with for you. Um, yeah. And what else did I have? Oh, dealing with the law. Saturn would be oh, yeah. a great planet to work with um, for that or developing patience, self-discipline, developing practicality. I kind of uh, struggle with that with my Piscean energy. I'm a little bit up in the clouds and like wanting to just like go and be abstract and like, so being practical is very very difficult for me and so I love working with Saturn because it makes me more realistic so I can achieve my goals yeah and um, absolutely yeah so I love Saturn so we've covered these seven traditional planets and what we're going to do next is going to be super fun I'm really excited we have this bowl of random spells in here and so we are going to pull these spells out of this bowl and then we are going to discuss which planets that we would use um, for whatever spells we find in here so we will do that next Molly, if you would like to go first, if you want to draw the spell out of the bowl, and then okay. we can debate on which planet we would each use, because we might not agree. So, I'm very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, Venus, our <laughs> Venus and Aries, we love to, we <laughs> yes. love to debate. Okay, yeah. so, a spell for, oh, well, hello, a spell for improving mental health from anxiety, depression, etc. So there's a few different things, but the first thing, obviously, mental health comes to mind is Mercury. Yeah. Um, really harnessing Mercury for some mental clarity. Um, as far as like anxiety and depression, you know, honestly, like Jupiter could really help with depression as well. So 
Um, but yeah, I, I immediately think of Mercury. I agree. I think Mercury is a great, anything that has to do with the mind and mental space, I immediately think Mercury. Mm -hmm. I think for, um, for mental health issues, for anxiety and depression, I would even throw in the moon because the moon governs yes. your emotions. Oh, and yeah. so when your emotions are all frazzled and all over the place, I would work with the moon to really help recalibrate and balance that. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, I think that what you said was great. Gorgeous. Also, you totally took the bowl away from me. I'm stealing. <laughs> That's rude. All, my all right, all right. <laughs> Next spell, we have... Good luck spell, Jupiter, clearly. Like yeah. that's immediately what I think of. Whenever I think of good luck and prosperity, I always think of the expansive Jupiter, Yeah, um, for sure. Do you have any other planets or are you straight up Jupiter I too? mean, for sure Jupiter, but you can always work with more than one. So the, mm -hmm. the sun, obviously, like we have the cards here, so I'm pointing to the, to the card. But yeah, the sun, because it like really brings in, it illuminates anything, so it makes anything bigger. I mean, Jupiter really makes everything bigger. But, um, but yeah, I would agree with you. We're like, we're gonna debate. We're in agreement on everything. <laughs> we agree on everything. Um, <laughs> your turn. Oh, already back to me. Okay, um, money, wealth, spells. Okay, so it really depends. Like, it depends on your financial space you're in right now. Like, are you, uh, are you wanting more abundance? You could look to Jupiter, but obviously like money and wealth, I think of Venus because it has so much to do with values. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I go to Venus immediately, but um, even Saturn, like Saturn could really bring in the structure and the stability and the boundaries you might need to focus to get yeah. that wealth and prosperity that you're looking for. So, yeah, I agree. I did a, um, I did did a video again. on, you did it again, that's okay. <laughs> I did a video on money bowls and I used Jupiter and Venus because oh. Jupiter is so expansive and um, it makes me feel like you are building wealth with Jupiter, but also Venus is all about your values and the home and you know mm -hmm. finances and all those like nitty gritty things in the physical world. So um, yeah, I would definitely pick both of those for, for money or for wealth or yeah. even the sun because the sun is just like the bringer of life, everything. All creation. <laughs> all creation. Everything. Yeah. 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 Saturn. Okay wouldn't be the best if you were already dealing with blockages it might not seem it's limiting energy right but mm -hmm. again like if you're looking for those boundaries and structures to get that income so yes. i think that's the only place we maybe differed but yes i think so all right moving on love spells venus <laughs> can't <Easy>. argue <laughs> i can't argue venus do we even need to say anything else move it on move on move yes on. <laughs> improving communication between you and another yes yeah. Are you looking weird at my handwriting right now? Just, just you. <laughs> no, your handwriting is gorgeous. I wrote these down before the video and she doesn't know anything that's in this bowl. True. Um, True. So, <laughs> yeah. True. But improving communication between you and other, I would say, I mean, I could go deep and I could be like, well, what are their signs? Like, what mm. is their main planet? Like, mm -hmm. what are, you know, what are their blockages um, in their chart? But I mean, Mercury, communication. The planets, Definitely. Yeah, you feeling the same? Yep, Mercury for sure. Communication between both parties. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and who knows? Maybe you're dealing with somebody who's a little bit angry, you know, and they need to like bring it down a notch. Maybe you're like, hey, Mars, you acknowledge Mars in that situation. You're like, oh, like maybe pull back a little bit there. Yes. So, anyways, yes, I agree with that. All right. Got a little guy here. Get a job spell. Huh. Okay. So, this one is uh, debatable because there's so many different angles you could go about this. Do you need motivation to get the job? Like, do you need to get your butt off the sofa to get a job? Because if that's the case, then I would use Mars because Mars, Mars is very much about like drive and ambition yes. and just like oomph, like that energy level. But to yeah. get a job, are you looking at it from like a prosperity standpoint? In which case I would use Jupiter because they're really expansive and, and it give, brings you good luck. So I would either use Mars for the drive and um, the ambition or Jupiter. I mean, you could even argue Mercury for get a job spell because that's all about yeah. your mindset and the mental space what would you say yeah I agree with you there's a point where you do that kind of inventory of self and you figure like do I need to bring in like who knows maybe you need more boundaries with Saturn maybe you do need like a little more of that administrative quality and you bring in Mercury and you're like okay I need to really just like discern and filter out the information and get my resume sorted you know there's all kinds of all the archetypes are gonna come in when you're looking for a job right yeah but like what is it that you are like falling short on and who do you want to call in to be on your team and yes and push you in that direction yep i agree cool. your turn oh me again <laughs> this is fun this is a fun game this is the funnest game this is a fun <laughs> um oh improving psychic gifts well i'm thinking of a transpersonal planet that we didn't go over um Oh, now you're going to get advanced. <laughs> oh, hey. Um, Neptune. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm thinking of Neptune. So, but the moon. La Luna. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be the one to help with your psychic gifts. And, yeah, as I far agree. As, I mean, you know, all of these archetypes are definitely powerful. But yeah, Venus also. 
Ooh, I wouldn't even think about Venus. I don't know. I feel like she is, I mean, if she's symbolic of love and that like really like sensual space, I don't know. Once you get deeper into your body and yeah. your senses, you can amplify. Okay, so my camera cut off literally mid-sentence and died. So Mercury we... was like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so we are talking about improving psychic gifts and talking about the moon. I, I would definitely equate that to the moon. Yeah. With the psychic gifts. But gifts <laughs> and illusions and whatever. Um, and then you were talking about Venus. Are there any other planets that you think that you would include with the psychic gifts? Oh yeah, I mentioned Venus just in case this cut off. Because of the sensual embodied experience, I think the more you can really get into your body, the more that you can like amplify your psychic gifts. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Cool. So yeah. Okay, got a couple more in here. This one is a spell regarding legal matters. Oh, we already kind of touched on this. Yeah. So yeah, I would use Saturn for this yeah. for sure. Saturn for structure and dealing with legal matters. Anything. Well, I mean, Venus rules Libra, which is all about like mm. like balance and, and yeah. you know fairness and justice. So I mean, you could equate that to legal matters, but yes. I would say like Saturn and the structure. I mean, it depends what legal matter you're dealing with. Like, oh, is it financial? Totally. Is it like, you know, you're dealing with, you know kiddos i don't know it just depends yeah um, exactly what you're dealing with i'm Very trying to broad. think of another example but yeah definitely consider what it, what the specifics of the legality the legal of the legality <laughs> of the legal situation <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's close enough it's fine oh, Next. real 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 <laughs> keep it raw and unfiltered yeah yeah we are <laughs> Protection magic. Okay, okay. So when I think of protection, I think of the boundaries and structures that Saturn builds for itself. Yeah, me too. Um, protection, though, I mean, if you're on the offense, Mars is going to come in and be like, I'll fight for you. Don't you worry about it. That is a form of protection. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> but again, it, and then it's like, but ultimately, I mean, I learned this from a uh, wonderful lady, and she told me that protection really isn't about like pushing outward so much as it is about like, really uh, building that light from within so you mm, could focus yeah. on the sun or the moon i mean this one's like again i'm Up always, for interpretation my yeah. my dualistic mind is like it's all circumstantial <laughs> <laughs> it totally is i mean i immediately go saturn because he's like the sky daddy you know i really like um saturn for protection yes but um i would also say maybe even the moon as well it depends on what you're protecting yourself from so if you're wanting to protect yourself from negative thoughts and emotions then i would say you could use mercury to protect yourself from negative thoughts or the moon to protect yourself from negative emotions or a psychic attack yes oh Yes, I almost swore, but I'm trying to filter uh -huh. myself. So, yeah, definitely after interpretation. Did you pull that one or did I? I think, uh, I think it's my turn. Yes, yeah, your turn. Okay, I, I put it there. Remember. Yeah, All right. Okay, so we have a spell for peace and tranquility. So I did not prep my answers to any of these, and I have to think about this for a second because it really just depends on like what why do you need peace and tranquility trying to think of like what you're g moving away from and that would really determine what it is i don't know i would say the moon because again it's with the emotions and so if you're trying to create peace and tranquility i would assume that there's some sort of imbalance with your emotional state that's making you feel not peaceful and not tranquil so i would work with the moon because it is emotion based but again you could argue mercury because of the mindset um if you are not at peace because you have all these like racing thoughts then mercury Mercury would be a good planet to work with. What do you What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking like, okay, so a spell for peace and tranquility, like, is somebody in pinging upon your boundaries? Oh, good like, point. You know? Yeah. Saturn. Saturn. Do you <laughs> love play and you want to just have fun and that brings you peace? Like, mm -hmm. and you want more, um, like, kind of playful energy? You could look to either the Sun or Jupiter in that circumstance. Um, yes, the sun and Jupiter are very playful. Yeah, or like I want peace and tranquility so I can do more art because that w that's what brings me peace, Venus. Oh, Venus. So again, mm. me and my me and my Gemini mm -hmm. zone are like it's so circumstantial. <laughs> it totally is. I see so many different ways. Yes. Also, I am pulling from Down to Marbles. Like she's one of my favorites. Oh, that, just that accent I'm doing. Like it's from my. It's just embedded in your soul. It's now, embedded. Both have watched so many Jenna Marble <laughs> movies or movies videos, whatever. Yeah. Um, her turn. Her life was a movie. Oh. My turn? Yes. It, yes, I think so. Ooh, sex magic. Mm. I'm calling in the cosmic lovers for this one. Venus mm. and Mars. Same, Venus and Mars. That is just a sex power couple. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, Venus very much about love and beauty and that sensuality, and then Mars about that sex drive. It's the yin and yang. It's like the ultimate yin yeah. and yang, for sure. Absolutely, and I feel like the more you can balance that within yourself, like the masculine feminine, the more you can really have the ultimate experience. Yes. Yes. 
yes, sex magic is fun. I wish YouTube would let us make a video about that. Oh Moving yeah, do we need on. to say do we need to say like segs? Segs like they and, do on TikTok and, I don't and know. make you have to bleep yourself. Or I something? don't I don't whatever. We're all adults here, hopefully. <laughs> um astral projection. So this one I have two planets in mind that I would use. So the moon is all about um improving, you know, your psychic gifts and abilities and illusions. So I could say you could use the moon, but for astral projection specifically, because it's not just psychic gifts, it's astral projection, I would use Mercury because Mercury is about travel traveling from one place to another. It's about um, the, the mental space. The feelers. The feelers? Yeah. What does the, that mean? The, the, like the, the antennas they have. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would definitely like anytime I'm going on a long road trip, I, I would work with Mercury. Um, and anytime I'm going to do astral projection into another realm, it's the same scenario, whether you're astral projecting, you know, in your physical realm or spiritual realm, whatever. Well, astral projecting is only in the spiritual realm, but yeah, I'd use uh, Mercury for that. Absolutely. You? Yeah. I feel you with Mercury. Yeah. I mean, I think of dreams and stuff too so my mind goes to neptune as well but we're not going oh, there oh yes we're yeah there are there. so many other archetypal energies and it's hard to stick to just the seven traditionals but astral projection also guess. tell us in the comments like what you think oh yeah absolutely tell us your interpretations and we also wanted to plug this in let's just do this now oh, okay. if you ever at any point are interested in watching us literally dress up as the archetypal energies of all these embody planets them. and embody these planets and what they would look like as human beings we would gladly do that because that sounds very fun so let us know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in watching mm -hmm. um and then we've only got two left here so you go for it Woo -hoo. Woo. man i'm like really thinking about the astral projection one still i know right yeah it's fun Okay, spells for success in school. You mentioned this earlier, Mercury, mm -hmm. because Mercury rules Gemini and that's all about like education. Um, yeah, I mean, for school, again, like what are you trying to bring in? What do you struggle with when it comes to school? Um, do you need, you know, more boundaries? Saturn, I always, well, Saturn, you're my fave today, I guess. But yeah, Mercury, just school. I always think of the mind. Yep, I would agree. Mercury for that, for sure. And then our last one here is friendship spells okay so f friendship spells are like bettering a relationship between you and a companion oh thanks i would say um i would use the sun for this because mm -hmm. i feel like the sun is so uh fun and playful and it really just brings that like happy friendship vibes you in know? your child yeah. yeah even the like if you think of the sun card in the tarot yeah you see the little child you know like yes yes that inner spirit i mean then that's where you really find friendship is when the inner child's and our children are connecting. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love the way of saying that. Yeah, so I would either, either use the sun or Venus, obviously, because Venus rules over relationships and partnerships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mercury, Mercury actually it rules friendships as well, and that place oh. of exchange oh, and I communication. Didn't know that. Yeah, totally. Oh. And even in relationships in general, people always want to look at like Venus and Mars, which is totally true, and the moon. But like in a natal chart, you want to look at Mercury as far as like friendships. Um, yes. And that place of exchange, like what is the thing that impedes relationships the most, like a lack of communication. Yeah, so, I love that. Um, yeah, perfect. That was so, so fun. So that I hope fun. that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you are interested in connecting with Molly, we are going to link her information down below. We're going to link your Instagram and your email. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Website to schedule will come. But yes, for yes. now, you can find me at um, M-O-L-L-I-S, Molly's dot musings. Um, and that's my Instagram. So and again, M-O-L-L-I-S dot musings. M-U-I-S-I-N-G. Um, and then my email is mollysmusings at gmail.com. So. Yes. Yeah. So we'll link those both yeah. down below for sure. And then in part two, we're going to be talking about, so this part one obviously was talking about the archetypal energies that these seven planets bring and how to use them in your magical practice. But part two, we're going to be discussing how to actually invoke those energies into your spell. So after you've decided what planet it is that you're going to use, how do you actually start working with that planet and bringing in that energy? So that will be part two. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here here with us today and we will see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.